In today's episode of Vegans Don't Know What Words Mean, we hit the streets of London to show people a three-minute clip from Joey Carbstrong's new documentary, Pignorant. The clip we showed them exposed high-welfare, free-range pig farming, as well as footage from the gas chambers that are used to kill most pigs in the UK, which shows graphic images of pigs screaming and thrashing around in pain as they're gassed to death. The first guy I spoke to was actually a scout leader out with the kids he was looking after, and the conversation we had shocked me. I can tell by the needlessly dramatic music. I highly doubt I'll be shocked though. I put on my big girl panties after my shower this morning. This man was possibly one of the most heartless, emotionless people I've ever spoken to. So um, could you tell us a bit about what you saw? Yeah, uh, it was the life cycle of a pig from being born um, to them being uh, farmed on uh, the, the farms and then uh, the slaughter of them at the end. Okay, yeah. yeah. and. Um, Get into this a bit of specifics. Was there anything that really stood out to you? Was you know surprised you? Um, more the the ill treatment. So when they were the the ones that had uh, growth and stuff on that, mm -hmm. and the way they treated them, mm -hmm. rather than uh, just isolating them ones and or yeah. uh, humanely killing them, putting them out the midway early. Mm. And the humane killing of the gas chamber, that, that's what they consider to be humane killing. That's RSPCA approved. Does that surprise you? Um, no, I never really thought about how they um, humanely kill yeah. uh, pigs up before. Yeah, that's so, the gas chamber you saw. That yeah. That's how most pigs are killed here in the UK. Okay. Um, that's what the RSPCA approves uh, as humane. Yeah. Um, the slaughterhouses, obviously, they believe it's yeah. humane. Do you, do you believe that's humane? Uh, I guess it's more humane than uh, hanging them upside down and slitting their throats like we, we used to do. Mm. Uh, more like kind of put them to sleep but obviously gas and uh lack of oxygen mm. i don't know about you but i found his answer reasonable ultimately the pigs will be put down if we're unhappy about the way that that is handled we can work together to find a more humane way to do it at the same time we also have to remember that it's a scale with most humane on one end and least humane on the other we have to be realistic about the fact that there may well be a limit to how close we can get to the side of most humane and as far as I'm concerned, if you pose the question that way, you've already allowed for the possibility of there being a humane way at all by expecting people to weigh a particular method on the scale. You know, it's the yeah. CO2 gas that they use. Um, yeah. So the reason they're screaming is when CO2 gas uh, reacts with their eyes and their, their um, skin, it burns. So their eyes are burning from acid, their throats are burning from the acid that's forming and also inside their lungs is burning from the acid. Uh, that's why they're screaming, flashing around. Yeah. Sometimes they even tear off their own limbs uh, and frantically trying to get away from this gas. I, I, okay. I wouldn't say that's any kind of uh, humane no, no. Uh, and, and death for anybody. So David establishes that he doesn't find this method humane. It would appear the other guy also wouldn't exactly call it humane, but we should remember that the scale we're working with is trying to make it as humane as possible and that there may be a limit to what's possible in terms of how to slaughter animals. If we think about something else, for example, life-saving surgery, we can see something similar happening. If a qualification for something being humane is whether or not it causes pain, then perhaps there is no way to perform a painless surgery. It would technically be inhumane in a way. We can't eliminate the inhumaneness of it, but we get as close as we can in order to reach the desired outcome. In the case of surgery, it's in order to preserve the person's chances of continuing to live. So too is the case when it comes to killing animals for proper human nutrition. Um, and then what you mentioned about hanging them upside down and, and um, cutting their throats, I mean, when we have the option to not do any of it, could we really describe any of that as humane? Humane with, means with compassion and benevolence, by the way. So yeah. could we compassionately or benevolently slit an animal's throat or gas them? I'm pretty sure there are more compassionate ways and less compassionate ways to kill something. If you knew one gas would cause prolonged pain and suffering, yet you chose that one because it was cheap while having the option to use a more expensive gas that caused less pain and suffering, I would say that choice lacks compassion and is less humane. David tries to sneak in the idea that there's the option of not killing them, but as far as I'm concerned, that's a completely different conversation. Some people are mature enough to handle it and some people aren't, I guess. Yeah, so with like more the same way we slaughter cows with the the pistol gun or something like that be yeah. seem more humane as a, a quicker way mm. of slaughter. 
would you say that's compassionate and benevolent when we have the option to not do it? If we don't kill them, how are we supposed to eat them? We kill them so that we have access to the nutrition that their bodies contain. What's the option of not killing them exactly if that's the reason why we are killing them? These types of conversations should just simply begin with establishing a foundation of whether or not we're going to kill them. After that is already determined, the question then becomes how, and we should be realistic about what that looks like. We can strive to try to kill the animal in the most humane, compassionate way we can, but we can't expect to be able to death battle Superman fry Goku's brain's magicalness to animals. There's a limit to our capabilities, and we can only do the best we can with what we have. Um, I guess not, but animals are food, so um, we have to kill them somehow, don't we? Do we? Yes, David. Do we need to explain that the least humane way is eating them while they're still alive? Um, I want my bacon sandwich in the morning. Do you? I do. You do, even after seeing this? <laughs> even after seeing that. I'd say that's pretty disgusting, to be honest with you. David's feeling disgusted. Is the fact that the guy doesn't care that he offended your sensitivity is supposed to be what makes him a possible psychopath? I don't like germs, and I understand that they can make people sick. So when my sensitivities are offended, even to the extent of my health being at risk, when someone sneezes or coughs without covering their mouths or when they don't wash their hands after using the bathroom and nobody cares, am I safe labeling them psychopaths? Maybe you think this is a reach, but we're halfway through the video and I'm still waiting for evidence of such a claim. That's okay, but yeah, yeah. but animals are food. It's part of what we, we've done for since we've been on the planet. Mm. Literally the key to our survival on this planet, but let's just pretend that plants that didn't exist even a hundred years ago, and definitely not in the forms we grow them in now, are somehow just as good or better at sustaining human life. And then neg people on the street for continuing to eat real food like we only just started doing it recently, and only for shits and giggles. I mean, yeah. look, we both know there are a lot of things that we've done since the beginning of being on the planet. Do you think that's a yeah. good, good justification to keep doing something? We've done it for a long time. If it's the key to our survival, genius, yes. Think of all the things of history that we've got rid of. Yeah, so we, we do change, don't we, when we evolve. Yeah. Um, and that, that's part of the human species, but... Yeah, so I guess the question is, are... do you want to be part of the evolution to a, a more civilized and less violent world, or do you want to stay in this violent world so you can have bacon sandwiches? Um, I think if we could find a different way of slaughter... Uh, that How about would, a different uh, way of eating? Proof. How about a different way of eating? How about a bacon yeah. that doesn't come from a pig? What the hell? David, bacon is made from pig. If it doesn't come from a pig, it cannot be bacon. Are we okay? Play-Doh is non-toxic, right? So let's just eat Play-Doh bacon sandwiches, you know, with some liquid smoke. So long as it looks like bacon or smells like bacon, we're good, right? What's that? No one's talking about using Play-Doh as food? Whatever toxic, gunky-ass garbage David's talking about is somehow supposed to be better? Okay. An alternative. Would that not be a, an option you'd consider? Um, to avoid that? To avoid all that violence? I don't think so at the moment. No. Okay. Yeah. That's just because you like the taste more than the... Uh... Yeah. I, I like my meat, I like my bacon, I like my sausages. That's what I think about when a vegan eats fake bacon or drinks fake milk. Like, animals died for that slop and it's not even nutritious. I just have this crazy feeling, and I don't know where it possibly could have come from, but I just have this feeling that if these alternatives were good enough, so many vegans wouldn't be needing supplements and protein powders to make up for what's lacking in that garbage. So if it's not nutritious, then why the hell are you eating it? Is it for the taste pleasure? Um, okay. Yeah. Uh, Would you say you're someone who puts uh, like pleasure above the rights of someone else? Not at all, no. Uh, that, that's what you're doing now. Yeah. Uh, but then how I live rest of life because I'm a teacher, scout yeah. leader, um, so I'm, I'm, per so, I'm, I'm perfectly um, convinced that you're a I'm, compassionate, empathetic person in the yeah. rest of your life, apart from when it comes to animals, which is, yeah. you know, no, the most but, defenseless beings, I mean those kids you are with, they're defenseless, you know, yeah. the pig is just as defenseless as any, as any child. This is totally off base, but I'm pretty sure children are more defenseless than pigs are. Yeah, um, why not exp expand but, that? You're clearly a good guy, yeah. you're doing good work with kids, why yeah. not expand that to those who are yeah. even weaker and even more vulnerable yeah. than those kids? I don't know, because, I don't know, I see animals as food, and, uh... You, you don't have to. I don't have to, no. Yeah. But, sure, if you don't want to live in reality and you only want to make believe your fantasies is truth, you'd be dead in short order though. I mean, at least the sad can give people decades. I can't be sure we can say the same for purely vegan since birth. 
but they are. And we, we don't have, doesn't have to be that way. That's, <laughs> that's a very heartless way of looking at it, but you're not a yeah. heartless person, clearly. With the work yeah. you do, that's not, yeah. you would never consider yourself that way, right? So no. cold and emotionless. Yeah. But so, I'm also, like, when I'm with doing any, my work, I, I do also like to make sure they understand where food comes from. Yeah. And, uh, uh, when we do survival camps, we get them involved with gutting fish, gutting rabbits, mm. uh, plucking birds and de gutting them, ready to cook. Awesome. I wish that I had had such survival training. I was plopped in front of a computer reciting PC parts and playing Oregon Trail. I would love to know how to survive outside of the concrete jungle. It should be part of every school curriculum as far as I'm concerned. Why though? Why? Mm. Why teach them such violent things on innocent animals when they don't have yeah. to do any of that in this, this world that we're in? Survival skills. It's uh, to know where your food comes from. And this guy is great. And we do eat meat. Uh, and that's right, it doesn't have to be. Like, it doesn't have to yeah. be that way. I mean, it's it's. I find it honestly, it's a real shame that 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 young people are being taught to to kill and you know abuse and kill animals for things that absolutely no reason at all. Because it would be a shame if they were stuck in the wilderness and they could actually feed themselves. In David's world, they could just fantasize a CVS into existence or get their supplements helicoptered in from Amazon with the fairy dust Wi-Fi on their seashell phone. You know, I find that, is, is it not a little bit of, is there any part of you think that's kind of sadistic in any way that these innocent animals are being slaughtered just for a practice? David seems to really want people to care how he feels. It seems really important to him, but David isn't being reasonable. It wouldn't matter whether we cared or not. Real life solutions to real life problems are required here. This guy needs to eat and he wants to eat. He finds actual food to eat. From the looks of it, he's likely pairing it together with the same material you want him to exclusively eat. If he wasn't doing that, the realistic expectation is that he would not be so obviously showing signs of metabolic syndrome. And here, David is trying to convince him to cut out the foods that are actually health promoting and only eat the garbage. Imagine telling a human to their face that you're disappointed, that they won't stop eating food, that they won't replace their food with crap that you eat that doesn't kill you right away and that actually isn't good for you. To stop actually eating food and to instead play make-believe in the kitchen, manufacturing nutritionally bankrupt slop that animals died for you to have that's likely going to wind up in the trash or making you feel like trash. Preschool, Play-Doh, fun time over the legit, simple acquisition of nutrition. Let's go back to kindergarten. Why not? Okay, children, let's see. Can you spot the difference? Can you spot the real human nutrition? Before you answer, keep in mind that facts don't care about your feelings. Let's move on, class. Can you tell me, if animals are going to die for us to eat anyway, which of these things would be better off eating? Which of these things is not making a mockery of the death of the animal? Which of these things is actually making the most of the death of that animal? Is it a little too high level for you to figure it out on your own? I'm going to give you and David the benefit of the doubt that the connections are firing, whether your emotions or your ideology will allow you to acknowledge it or not. Not at all. No. Well then, there's no use continuing no. the conversation no. then. Uh, I hope Thank you changed. Thank you very much. I don't, I don't, I'm, I'm sorry man, I'm, okay. I've got no platitudes left for you, it's, it's incredibly disappointing to be honest with you, I really hope you change yeah. your mind, and I hope, considering you're so influential for these young people, I really hope you make a change and, and help them make a change, don't keep on encouraging them to stab innocent little animals for, for some kind of, um, yeah. you know, whatever it is, you know, for some right. practice, for some training or something, I hope you change. It would be a shame if we fed children nutritious food, wouldn't it? And then he just walks off. He can't even let his guest have the last word. Like, what? The look on his face is priceless, by the way. David just gets all pouty and fucks off. Like, you're not going to fall from a basis ideology. You're not going to starve yourself for not saving any animals, actually. You, as a person who apparently tries to teach children how to survive in nature and without complete dependence on industry by showing them how to do things like gut fish, you mean the footage you saw today didn't change your mind and get you to stop being a legit productive member of society? You don't want to make a living out of trying to convince unwitting members of society to ditch what is likely the last thing they're actually doing right in terms of health promoting behavior? Well, I'm going home. We'll end the video here for today. Please leave your thoughts down below. Thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you again in another video. As always, be having a good day.